Yes? All right, sing them in. Right away. Quite all right. Hand them to Attorney Brown, please. Yes, Mr. Dean. That's his worry now. My worry is how to convince Flo Gray she needs a trip to Honolulu. What would you suggest, Miss Hall? I'm afraid I don't have any suggestions. Well, I won't hold that against you. What will we do while you're gone? Oh, Attorney Brown will take over during my absence. Will there be anything else? No, uh, I think not. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Well, let's drink to the biggest number bank in Harlem. I think we should drink to the squarest number banker in Harlem. Why not to you? Brown, you're a marvel when it comes to putting money where it'll do the most good. L.B., come here a minute. What is it, Brown? You see here, L.B., just as I was saying, this account of Jack Jackson's has gone too far. Today he owes $2,000. Yeah. I've been giving that quite a little thought lately. It seems that since he opened his new pool room, he hasn't been able to take care of the jungles very well. But he'll make good. That's just the trouble. You're entirely too easy. How about a little drink? And I suggest that you see him no later than tonight. And, if you can't get satisfaction, close his account. Jack's been handling that district for two years now. He always comes out all right. I hope you're right. Sometimes you have to give a little, as well as take. Well, is there no one else who can take over his business? Jack himself has been telling me of a young fellow, has ambition and ideas. Brown, I think I'll go down to the jungles tonight. You just took off a limb stack. Oh, he did, did he? Why, that sneaking little thief, I'll beat his brains out.
If you'd have phoned, I'd have sure had a real welcome committee to meet. Quite all right, Jackson. Tell me, who is that youngster? That's Thor. Curly, the kid I was telling you about. And willing to take orders. Jackson, I want to meet him. Sure, that's fine. Curly. Yeah, Jack. Curly, I want you to meet Mr. Lee. Glad to meet you, Curly. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Lee. Jack's always telling me what a great guy you are. Jackson, I could use a kid like this uptown. Good boy. Give him a chance to execute some of those ideas you were telling me about, if they rate it. That's fine. Suppose you let him come with me. Okay. You don't mean I'm going to Harlem and work with you, Mr. Lee. That's it exactly, Curly. But, Mr. Lee, don't you worry about a thing. Here's my card. Be there Monday morning at 8 o'clock. I'll be there at 6. <laughs> but, Curly, the office doesn't open until 8. That's all right. I'll wait. Jackson, you've done me quite a favor. Call me in the morning. I want to talk with you. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'll call you about 10 o'clock. I'll see you to your car. That's all right, Jackson. You've done enough. Good night, boys. Good night, Mr. Lee. Good night, sir. Curly, it took me a long time to set you right with the boss, Curly. But now it's all over with but the shout. And you ain't kidding, mister. I'll do the shout. <laughs> you bet you will. I always said that you need something big to take over. You're doing all right down here, ain't you? Yes, but that would be small stuff for you. Anyway, you're setting all right. You're in where the doors be. Congratulations. <laughs> Larry, I'm in. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, boy. Boys, boys. Get around. Get around. <laughs> now you see what it means to have Jack Jackson for your friend. Because it was through me that Curly got his break with Larry Lee. Yeah? Yeah, with the biggest bank in the Hall of Harlem. Larry Lee's a special friend of mine. That's right. And a right guy. He is a right. The squarest number banker in all of Harlem. Right. Curly's been with me ever since he was a kid around the corner. That's what he was telling me. Yeah, he wasn't afraid to take orders and carry them out. That's why I spoke to Larry about him. Now he's going to work for the richest number banker in Harlem. Jonah? Yeah. Pretty soon he'll be in a position to do favors. Who do you think is going to pay? Who? <laughs> sure, that's right, me. And that'll help you, Scott. Yes. Now, without saying any more, I'm going to give Curly 200 bucks. Yeah. So he can go and really represent the Jones when he goes to Harlem. And there he is. Tonight? We're going to celebrate. No. Now, we're going to have a party. Well, all right. All right. All right. Now, that is a party. Well, all right. Yes, sir. Does that make you feel like you want to step away? It sure does. Lay them down for me. Lay them down. You want me to? Yeah, I want you to do that thing, boy. Hey, yeah. Did you have an appointment with Mr. Lee? Yeah, he told me to be here at 8 o'clock. I'm sorry he hasn't arrived, but I do expect him any minute. He's usually here about this time. Oh, well, that's okay. I'll wait. Hello? 
now. Later. Yes? Oh, good morning, Mr. Lee. Yes, right away. Mr. Lee's in. I'll tell him that you're here. Mr. Lee will see you now. Thanks, Tits. Good morning, Mr. Lee. Hello, Kelly. Sit down. Thanks. Well, Curly, how do you like the layout? I think it's swell, Mr. Lee. Must take a lot of money to keep it going. Yes, it does, Curly. But most of all, it takes hard work. Underhand methods are never used. Well, they say. Anything's fair in love and war. That's right. But this is not love. Nor is it war. It's business. Yeah, I think I understand. Have a little drink? Yes, thanks. I believe we will. All right. Will it be? You got a good coal belcher? Belcher? A ginger ale or something. Oh, sure. I can give you some cracked ice and ginger ale. That's swell, Mr. Lee. Nothing else? Nope, thanks. That's as strong as I go. Well, Curly, you know I have no objection to anyone drinking. Oh, neither have I. Stay on your toes and get this end of the business down. And later, I might put you in charge of the district. When do I get the district? When you can prove to me you know enough about the business to handle it. Thanks, Mr. Lee. That's swell. Yes, Mr. Lee. Will you come in, please? Well, here's luck. Miss Hall, this is Curly Thorpe. He's going to be one of my special agents. Tell George Smith to see that he meets the boys and is shown around the office. How do you do, Mr. Thorpe? If you'll call me Curly, I'll know who you mean. I'll be seeing you, boss. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Smith, this is Mr. Curly Thorpe. How do you do, Mr. Thorpe? Glad to know you. Mr. Thorpe is one of Mr. Lee's new men. Will you see that he meets the rest of the boys in the office? Yes, I'd be glad to. Curly Thorpe, this is one of our best controllers, Bert Mitchell. Glad to know you, Curly. Glad to know you, Mr. Mitchell. He's going to work down you with us. Gee, that's swell. If I can be of any help to you, let me know. Thanks. Maybe you can. Later. Ben Jones? Yes, George. Why I you... want you to meet Curly Thorpe. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Jones. You're a good man to know. The pleasure's mine, Mr. Thorpe. Yeah. Yes, the pleasure is a good man to know. Oh, don't mind me. I only work here. Yeah, I still say you're a good man to know. This is Harry Patton, our bookkeeper. Harry, I'd like to have you meet Curly Thorpe. Glad to know you, Mr. Thorpe. If you call me Curly, we'll be friends. Okay, that suits me, Curly. What time are you going to lunch, Harry? Oh, any time around 12. All right, we'll meet you at the drugstore. Okay. So long, fellas. Good Glad night. to meet you. Well-looking dame was? That, my dear young man, was Flo Gray from the Club Congo, girlfriend of the big boss. Not the Flo Gray who broadcasts nightly. 
When I say slow gray, I mean the slow gray, which also means you ain't got a chance, brother. <laughs> yeah. Half of that I'll believe, but the other half, I don't. And which half don't you believe? The half that says I ain't got a chance. Says you. Yeah. Says me. <laughs> Go on. Did you see what I saw, Tony Brown? <laughs> yes, Flo, I couldn't miss it. That must be L.B.'s new protege from downtown. Larry's always doing something for everyone but himself. You must make him take care of himself. I've been trying to do just that for months now. Good afternoon, Miss Gray. Mr. Lee is here. You may go right in. How do you do, Attorney Brown? And how are you, Miss Hall? Thank you, Miss Hall. Why, Flo, this is a surprise. Hello, Brown. How are you? Hello, L.B. Oh, yes, of course. That's all, boys. You can get your lunch now. Hello, Larry, darling. Sit down. Make yourselves comfortable. Well, this looks like big guns drawing up for an attack. <laughs> it is. And unless you listen to reason, L.B., you're in for a long spell of serious illness. And, I might say, very serious. I'm sold, Brown. If you can convince Flo the trip will do her good, I'll go at once. Larry, I've told you the new show is built around me, and I can't leave. Well, that's that. L.B., my advice is that you get some rest. And soon. And my advice is lunch. And drinks for you, too. What'll it be? No, thanks. I'll see you both later in the day. And don't forget that rest. Okay, Brown. Larry, Attorney Brown is right. You need rest and a tonic. All the tonic I need is a big hug and a kiss, and you can be my doctor. I can't see what this making out duplicate reports means to anybody. Why can't we do it the old way? Well, the big boss says that Curly must get what he wants, and he wants a copy of all reports. Yeah, he watches the business like a hawk. All he does is sit there at that desk and study the reports from the different districts. Betty, get me last week's reports on Jackson's district. Which Jackson do you mean, Mr. Thorpe? Jack? No, Al Jackson, the Sugar Hill district. I'll get to Jack later. Get Al Jackson in here right away. All right, I'll turn it once. Jackson. Sit down. Thanks, Curly. How you feel today? Listen, Al. There's no excuse you can offer to make me see a three hundred dollar day falling off in your business up there. Now get this straight. We don't have any controllers in this bank that lose business like that. Curly, but you don't understand. I understand your $300 a day behind last week. And that only means one thing. Somebody's chiseling your district. Now, you get those chiselers out, or we'll get you out. That's all, Al. Okay, if that's the way you feel. That's just the way I feel. Betty, put these reports in the file and get me the rest of today's report. Yes, sir. Mr. Thorpe. Yeah? Mr. Lee wants to see you right away. Okay. Did you send for me, L.B.? Yes, Curly. I wonder if I could get you to do me a favor. Why, sure. Brown's using my car this afternoon, and I had an engagement with Miss Gray. Could I get you to pick her up for me at Club Congo? Why, that's not a favor. That's a pleasure, L.V. Thanks. You'll have to hurry. I should have been there five minutes ago. You're practically there now, by proxy. Betty? I'll be gone out for a few minutes. Might be an hour. And it might be longer. Hello, Curly. Where are you headed?
headed for? You seem to be going places in a hurry. I'm headed for the Club Congo, Luke, on special business. That may be where you're going now, Curly, but I don't think you know where you're headed for. Why, Luke, I'm just an infant. As you would say, a babe in the Harlem Woods. Curly, there's more truth to that than there is a joke. Luke, I'm going to let you in on something. Someday, I'm going to be the biggest and the most talked of guy in all Harlem. Yeah. Yeah. So was Bud Hanson. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. But Luke, I'm going down fighting. Curly to you, Flo. Larry, all right? Sure he's all right. Why didn't he come for me? You're getting a break. What are you hollering about? He sent me to get you. I'll be the judge of that. I'll be out in a few minutes. Take your time, babe. Don't hurry. I'll be waiting right here for you. Larry, this is the happiest evening I've spent in months. You realize this is the first time we've been out to dinner together in three months? You've been so busy, darling. I've seen precious little of you. Waiter. Yes, sir. Bring us another bottle. Yes, sir. Larry, you shouldn't order any more. We've had quite enough. You've been listening to Dr. Howard so much, you sound just like him. I have to keep reminding you that you're not well. But it's for your own good. Well, let's celebrate tonight, sweet. And tomorrow, I promise you, I'll do something about it. Then let's drink to tomorrow. And don't forget Dr. Howard. Take care of our check in the morning. It's quite all right, Miss Green. Well, L.B., the first thing I prescribe is that you spend two weeks or more in absolute quiet. You've been working night after night with this young fellow, Curly. Your resistance is gone. All right, Doc. I'll give up. Flo, call Curly in the morning. Tell him to take things over. Well, maybe I can do something for you now. Oh, Mr. Thorpe, Miss Gray's on the wire. Do you want to talk to her? Sure, I will. Put her on. Hello, babe. What got you up so early? Mr. Thorpe, Mr. Lee is seriously ill, and it's been ordered by Dr. Howard to remain in bed for the next couple of weeks. Oh, that's too bad. Mr. Lee asked me to call you and tell you to take things over until he returns to the office. He wants me to take things over? Yes, that's what he said. That's swell. That's just what I've been waiting for. How about you, babe? Okay. Now, Miss Hall, get the boys in here at once.
Yeah. The boys are here, Mrs. Thorpe. Send them in. Did you say send them in? Exactly. Now, boys, L.B. is a very sick man. And he'll be out of the office for some time. While he's gone, I'm taking over. Is that understood? Okay by me. I'm with you, Curly. Same here. All right. Now, I want you to listen, because this is what's going to happen. Curly must have moved into the Boston office. Yes, all of the guards went in there, too. I wonder what's up. I heard they had to carry L.D. out of a restaurant last night. What? Lowe so Gray called and said that L.D. would not be in for a few days. I heard she talked to Curly this morning. He said something about that. I know. She told me all about it. She said that L.D. had asked him to look after things for a few days. That's all. But he has moved into the private office and... And I heard him tell Flo Gray that's just what he's been waiting for. Well, I don't want to be here with L.D. That me neither. Now, that's a setup. I want you boys to meet me tonight at 10 o'clock. Sharp. We'll be there. is pretty good these days. Well, not so good, but pretty fast. How many runners you got? How many runners have we got? Oh, a few. How many? About 15. But they don't do much business. How much business? About a thousand feet. That's swell. I'll have one of my men pick up in the morning. I'm sorry, Mr. Thorpe, but I can't. Why? I don't do business that way. Oh, you don't do business that way, huh? No, I don't. Well, maybe you like this way better. taking care of the business. He's all right, isn't he, Miss Hall? Yes, Mr. Lee. Flo, do you know Curly's doubled the bank already? I told you that kid had something. Yes, I'm sure of it. It's been very nice of you to see that I get the reports each day, Miss Hall. I want to thank you for your trouble. Really, it's no trouble, Mr. Lee. I enjoy getting out of the office for a few minutes. Oh, shall I have Attorney Brown take care of the contact men? Oh, uh, by all means. The payoff is very important. You'll see to it that he gets the money. Yes, I'll take care of it, Mr. Lee. The district attorney's office has ordered an investigation into the practice being carried on in your division known as banking numbers. The police department in general, and the Harlem division in particular, will lend every effort to assure the successful conclusion to this investigation. It is the duty of every member of the department to give full and wholehearted cooperation in every instance where he is requested to act. 
During this investigation, all leaves of absence are canceled, and every officer and patrolman will make himself available for 24-hour duty on call. Clean up your posts. Bring in every man possessing a number slip. That's all. Sergeant, take charge of detail. Answer. Ready? This organization was formed for the purpose of protecting us from just the kind of thing that is happening now. L.B. Lee was the man who insisted that we go into this kind of thing to protect us. That's right. He was the real cause of us getting together. Joe, we can get nowhere with all this. We know conditions. What we want is a remedy for them. What would you suggest as a remedy? There's only one thing we can do now. There's a call a special meeting for 8 o'clock tonight. Upon a committee to demand L.B. his presence at this meeting. And the committee will accept no excuse, but he must be here. Well, it's 4.30 now. We must get him right away. That's a good idea. Let's get it over while we're all here. Hello, babe. What's the rush? Why, you're all out of breath. Sit down there. Curly, the Bankers Association just called Mr. Lee. The man says that he'd be at a special meeting tonight at 8 o'clock. So what? Curly, don't you realize what you're doing? For the last 10 days, we've been keeping newspapers from L.B. so that he wouldn't know. Now, if he goes to that meeting tonight, they'll tell him everything. The shock may be too much. Isn't there anything you can do but sit there and stare? Say something. You're beautiful when you're angry. Hello. Oh, hello, L.B. How are you? Listen, Curly. Francis are having a special meeting tonight. They just called me and insisted that I be there. Why don't you let me take care of that, L.B.? I thought of that, but they say I must be there. Okay. I'll meet you. What time? Meet me there at 8 o'clock. All right. That's that. Curly. Why must you be so hard-hearted, cold, and cruel? Just what are you trying to do? Flo, I came from a section of New York that you may have heard of, but know nothing about. The jungle. I was deprived of all the things that a kid likes and wants. And now, I intend to get out of life everything that I missed as a kid. And nobody's gonna stop me. Gentlemen, 
For the last 10 days, a reign of terror has been carried on in Harlem. Control men have been forced to leave the bank they worked with. Stores have been wrecked. Runners have been beaten for riding in certain districts. Now, an investigation is being carried on by the district attorney's office, and we're all in the same boat. Mr. Lee, your bank has been the only one to escape. Your men have not been bothered. Your bank has benefited by all these things. We insisted on your presence here in spite of your conditions so that we may know the meaning of all this. I'm sure you're acting in good faith when you take this method to remedy matters. All I know of this is what you have told me here. Why, the papers have been full of it. I haven't read a paper in two weeks. My accounts have shown an increase, but I had no idea this was going on. I thought my business was being handled by someone I could trust to carry on in the same manner that I would have done. My books will be gone over at once. Any account on them belonging to you gentlemen will be returned to you. Attorney Brown will take care of this redistribution, this reign of terror, as you have called it, will cease from this moment on. Suits me all right. Me too. I'm dreadfully sorry for all the trouble this has caused you. I can assure you that with your indulgence and your cooperation, the matter will be taken care of in a very few days. Curly, I'd like to see you in the office immediately after the meeting. Gentlemen, may I be permitted to bid you good night? Good night. 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 Good what I should do is send you back to the gutter, back to what you used to, back to the jungle. Curly, I ought to fire you. Listen, L.B., you've been blowing your top for a half hour or more, and I'm tired of it. Sit down before you wear yourself out. Give your ears a break and listen to me. To begin with, you can't fire your partner. Partner? Partner? What do you mean? I mean that from tonight on, I'm your partner. I've got half of the bank, at least half the profit. Why, Curly, you're crazy. That could never be. Oh, no. I doubled the business, didn't I? And I'm taking the part I built up. Well, the Bankers Association would never stand for a thing like that. Suppose I told the bankers you knew what was going on for the past two weeks. They wouldn't believe you. But the money did go into your pocket. They'd believe that, wouldn't they? But I told them I'd give their accounts back to them. That's my half of the business, and I'm protecting that. Now listen, Alfie. I've got a plan that'll double the bank again. I won't have anything to do with any of your schemes. You don't need to. Take a nice long trip and leave the rest to me. I don't feel right about it. If you're that. afraid of the heat, then that's the thing to do. Because I'm going to make Harlem hot as... Curly, I'm a sick man. And for that reason... Forget it, L.B. I know how you feel. Go to South America for, let's say, a year. You'll feel better. Now let's have a drink, and the whole thing's set. L.B., what do you have? Curly. 
No, no, see? How's business? Pretty good. Yeah, I was just getting ready to call you on the phone. I, I saw the phone here, and I knew I could call you, so I... How much business you doing today? Hmm? You heard me. About... About 15 minutes, eh? Yeah? I'll send a man in in the morning to pick up. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So long, Pete. Thank you. Well, you can't trust these little bastards now, Dave, don't you, Charlie? I still don't believe that L.B. is at fault. What's well, not like him? He made us a promise. Did he keep it? I'll say it didn't. He took a boat and left the country, didn't he? Yes, and ever since then, things have been getting worse. Well, this man, Curly, has been running things in a high-handed manner. Yeah, and Curly's working for L.B., ain't he? It's the same old question, too. Well, gentlemen, what will we do about it? Now, the question is, what can we do about it? Mr. Curly, you look like a million dollars. Thanks, George. I feel like a million. But the guy that invented these things ought to be made to sleep in one. Once you get them on, they ain't so bad. Did you send that basket of flowers to Miss Gray at the Club Congo? You know I wouldn't forget that, Mr. Curly. And this opening night at the club? Was it a pretty basket? Sure, it was the best one he had. What time is it? You got plenty of time. It's just 12 feet. And you don't want to see anyone but Miss Gray. Who told you so much? Nobody. I just watched you the other night when you was listening to her on the radio. By the time I get my party together, the show will be over. No, sir. They're waiting for you downstairs. Why you haven't come up? Mr. Lim rang the bell and said they would be waiting when you're ready. Oh. Yeah. Some stuff, huh? Fine, Mr. Curley. Well, how am I doing? Very fine. See you in the funny papers. And George, don't wait up for me. No, sir.
boys. How about some champagne? Sure, oh, boys. Sure. Well, a uh, waiter. Yes. Uh, will you tell Miss Gray that Curly Thorpe wants her to have a drink at his table? Yes, Mr. Thorpe. Thank you. And waiter, send us in some champagne. Yes, Mr. Thorpe. Thanks. See who that is, Bessie. What do you want? I want to see Miss Gray. Who is it, Bessie? A waiter says he wants to see you, Miss Gray. You may let him come in. What is it? Uh, Miss Gray, Mr. Curly Thought told me to ask you if you wouldn't have a drink with him at his table. I'd be very pleased to join his party. And many thanks. Yes, that's great. Mr. Thorpe, Miss Gray said that she would be glad to join your party. Where is she? She is dressing, Mr. Thorpe. Dressing? Yes, sir. Taking off her costume. Oh, yeah. Sure. Thanks. Listen, you mugs. There's a young lady coming to this table in a few minutes. A very particular friend of mine. Now, if any of you birds feel a wise crack coming on, I want you to write me a letter about it when you get home. Okay. 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 Sure, Curly. We'll be careful. Uh, it was nice of you to come, Flo. Thanks a million for those beautiful roses. Did you know uh, they're my favorite? Does a man ever know anything about a woman? You seem to, Mr. Thug. People I like call me Curly. And may I call you Curly? I like you. All right, Curly. Wait a Yes, sir. Chill some champagne. Yes, sir. How much? Oh, about half a dozen bottles. Yes, sir. Must we drink all that? Drink all you want, babe. And send some back to your friends in the show. Shall I tell them you like the show? Tell them I thought it was grand. But you're the best thing in it. Thank you. I'll tell them you liked it. Waiter. Yes, Will miss. you take some wine to everyone in the show and tell them that I sent it with Mr. Duff's compliment? Yes, ma'am. For tonight we celebrate. The grandest opening that Harlem has ever seen. And the prettiest song I know. All right, we celebrate. What do we do now? It's your party. Oh, yeah? Wait a minute. Yes, sir. Bring me my check. Yes, sir. Yeah. The meeting of the bankers that you requested will be held Friday evening at 8 o'clock. That's well. Hello. This library is calling. Oh, swell. Put her on. Hello, babe. I've been expecting a call all morning. Well, it's just noon. I didn't want to wake you up. When have I seen you? Oh, what do you say to dinner at 6? I wish it was 6 now. Okay, I'll pick you up. Bye, hon. I tell you, this guy, Curly Thorpe, has been up here every night for a couple of weeks. He's off about that dame Flo Gray. He's either crazy about her or that song she sings, maybe both. He just sits there sometimes with a glass of ginger ale. Sure spends plenty dough, look at this. Here it is, five nights in a row, and the smallest check, a thousand bucks. That's a lot of dough. curly has got that number racket sewed up, and he's getting plenty. But that's a nickel and dime game. Yeah, any time a guy has a nickel and dime game and spends dough like this, I want to know more about the game. That's you go out and get the load on. Okay, Butch, I'll have it for you.
Nickel and dime game. The guy spins dough like this. She's doing all right, huh, babe? Of course it is, silly boy. What did you expect? I never expect anything but perfection, like I found in you. Oh, Curly. Uh, have you tried the radio? Of course. It works. Turn it on. You know, Flo, that's the sweetest piece of music I've ever heard. We're going to make that our theme song. Kelly, have you ever thought of what it would mean to have a home in the country, away from all this, with someone you love? You bet I have. And you're that someone I love. Then why don't you quit? Oh, I can't quit now. I'll just be getting to go places. But it won't be long. Honey, you don't mind if I keep an 8 o'clock appointment tonight, do you? I'll wait. You won't be long. Oh, long. I'll just be a few minutes. Gentlemen, the Bankers Association has been arguing for some time about conditions that exist in our very honorable business. Claims of racketeering and underhand methods on both sides has caused no end of unpleasant publicity. Finally, an investigation from the DA's office. Now, this business has been held together through my efforts. I came here through our very mutual friend, L.B. Lee. I have a solution that's going to put an end to the worries of all you bankers. I'm going to place a man from my staff in the office of every banker. For 20% of the gross receipts. 20%? What is it? Gentlemen, this will put an end to this so-called reign of terror. Now, with the hearty cooperation you have always accorded my plan, I am sure that this one will work out to the advantage of everyone concerned. Since I have other engagements, I ask to be excused. Gentlemen, good night. <laughs> There are 12 guys that handle all of the plates. They call them bankers. Since his curl has taken over, he's given them an awful kicking around. What do they say about it? Saying nothing. But they want it. Yeah, well, why don't you do something? You say there's plenty of dough? There he is now. Plenty, and the percentage is big. That's easy. You get to each one of them bankers and tell them that Butch Williams is going to give them all the protection they need, take the pressure off of them, and make it possible for every man to run his own bank without any interference. And all I want is five percent. Curly's taking twenty. That's gone over. Tell him what a nice fellow he is. Pay his check. You know, soften it up a little. Okay, Butch. Yeah? I'm Mr. Perry to see you, sir. Perry? Oh, yeah, yeah. Send him in. Well, good afternoon, gentlemen. This is a surprise. It was nice of you to take care of that check for me the other night. Thanks a lot. Oh, don't mention it, Curly. The house is supposed to buy once in a while, even at Club Congo. Well, Vince, what can I do for you? I came here to make a proposition. Go ahead. I'm all ears. We have taken over the numbers at Harlem, and I came here to make a separate deal with you. Just who do you mean, we? 
What's Williams and the boy? And if you're smart, and I think you are, you will throw in with us. Listen, Vince, what you think doesn't matter. Now, you go back and tell your boss that I control the numbers in Harlem, and that's the way it stays. Butch Williams and 50 like him can't run me out. Some of those spineless nitwits might want to get down and crawl when you go to them. But they're going to dance to my music. Do you understand that? They're going to dance to my music. Now, get out before I throw you out. Get out! How do you like that? They're gonna take over the numbers. What are you saying, let's rub them? Get me every number banker and haul them on the phone. I want to talk to them. Personally. Hello, is Mr. Williams in? Mr. Thorpe calling. Just a minute, please. Hello, yes. Mr. Williams isn't there? Well, will you have him call Mr. Thorpe when he comes in? He's gone for the day? Thank you. Hello, is Mr. Lindez in? Mr. Thorpe calling. Just a minute, please. Hello, Mr. Lindez is out? When do you expect him? You don't know when he'll return? All right, thank you. Ah, Curtis, right numbers now, eh? You know better than that, Sarge. What would I be doing with number slips in my car? This is a framer. You know I don't write no numbers. Let me call my lawyer. Let me call my lawyer. Take it easy, take it easy. Hello, Curly. How's business? Hiya, Loot. Listen, these mugs don't Just want... Just a minute, Curly. I'll take charge of this, Sergeant. Go in my office, Curly, and call your lawyer. down to the station house, and was he burning? He looked right at me twice. Thought sure he'd see me. Yeah. I'll stick around, see what happens, and let you know. So long. Is your father living? No. He died in the war. Is your mother living? No. Any relatives? None that I know of. You say your full name is James A. Thorpe? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's the idea, loot of all the questions? This is called a DOA. It means dead on arrival. Well, what are you filling it out for me for? Well, sometimes it's pretty hard to get the correct information when you need it. This may come in handy. All right, Beth, give me the loadout. Okay, Butch. This guy Curly's through, I tell you. I sent the boys down to get him. You what? Yeah. That was the only way out. He wouldn't listen to reason. Where are the boys? Waiting for him to come out of the building. When he does. Curt. Lights just went out in Curly's office. Here. Here he comes now. Oh, hello, Mr. Curly. I see you. Hello, Ben. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, Mr. Curley, I'd like to speak to you a minute, Mr. Fitz, please. I'd like to speak to me. You just talked to me a couple of nights ago, Ben. Well, this is something altogether different. Oh, this is different. Is it as good a story as the other night? I can't shoot now. That guy's in the way. So this is a better story than the other one, huh, Yes, man? it is. It absolutely is, Mr. Curley. I really need this. You got to have it. I got to have it. My mm -hmm. sister needs it real bad. Oh, your sister needs it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Five dollars. Yes, sir. Well, if your sister needs it, Ben... And maybe we'd better give you a thing, huh? 
Well, thanks, Tony. I really you appreciate are. that. You do, huh? Yes, sir. Okay, Ben. That's well. Now, uh, Ben. Yes, sir. If you win... Yes, sir. I want half. Okay, Mr. Curry. See you later. Okay. I got him. No, you didn't. He's getting away. Well, turn around and follow him. Oh, I asked you not to come up here. Eight days of this is about driven me crazy. I can see you or hear from you. I had to know. I sent word to you when this first started. I'd get in touch with you and see you as soon as possible. But that's so uncertain. You must do something. Give them a business, anything, so long as you get some rest. Living on coffee and cigarettes, pacing the floor night and day. You just can't stand it. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I got to think. George. Yes, sir. Bring me some more coffee. Coffee? Yes, Mr. Curley, I was just coming in with it. Thanks, George. That's a good egg. Ain't there no more cigarettes? No, sir. That last carton I bought is gone. Open the door, it's Lynn. Yes, sir. Excuse me, Mr. Lim, but you know we have to be careful. Come on, Lim, out with it. How many men did we lose? They burned out the office. They did what? That's it, Curly. They burned out the office. Yeah. Well, if that's what they want, I'll give them all they're asking for. Curly, you can go. I can, eh? They asked for it, and I'm going to give it to them. Wait a minute, Curly. We'll take care of it for you. I do my own fighting. Please, honey, don't go. They'll kill you. So what? I'd rather take the fight to them than be killed like a rat in a hole. Get out of my way, Lamb. Operator. Operator, give me police headquarters. Lieutenant Ballot speaking. Yes. He did what? How long ago? All right, I'll take care of it right away. Sergeant, send all radio cars in the distance. Help Congo, I'll take an emergency. Hi! Curly is getting out of the car downstairs. He's coming up the steps. Give the rest of the board to scatter in the big room, and when he comes through those curtains, let him have it. Come on. Come on, do rat. Get out of them holes. Come on and fight. You want to fight? Huh? You want to fight? Huh?
right, boys, line them up. Don't let anybody get away. Hiya. Luke? Hello, Curly. Take it easy, boy. How's business? Just fair, Luke. I guess that's your way. Here's the ticket, Luke. 